From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Al Sintella at police headquarters, Johnny. Yeah. You hear what happened at the Criterion Theater after the show last night? I was off duty when you called, but Sergeant Rogers gave me a fill-in this morning. So somebody tried to drop a sandbag on Amy Bradshaw backstage. Yeah, a real near miss. You still think these attempts on her life are publicity stunts? No, uh, it looks like your hunch was right. I'll have a couple of my boys keep an eye on Amy. Thanks. Johnny, you wanted to know the whereabouts of this guy, Bill York, the husband Amy separated from... What have you got on him, Al? 768 West 4th Street, down in Greenwich Village. Thanks, I'll check it. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. New York City, expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. To the Home Office, Northwestern Indemnity Alliance, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Amy Bradshaw matter. Expense account item 8, 275. Taxi from my hotel to Greenwich Village to try and locate a writer named Bill York, who had separated from Amy six months ago. Amy was a good actress, but she couldn't hide the fact she was plenty scared by the attempts on her life in the last three days. My hunch was it was someone close to Amy, and Bill York was very much on my list. After all, he was the beneficiary on our life insurance policy. I hadn't been to this part of the village in two or three years, but from the looks of it, it hadn't changed a bit. Defiantly shabby and run down. A few beards here and there, a few gals with long, straight hair. Bookstores and bars, side by side. I checked at the address Al Centella had given me. It was a beat-up old rooming house. You come down here to interview the famous writer, something like that? Not exactly. Too bad. Here I thought you wanted to carry my message to America. No, I'm afraid that's a little out of my department, Mr. York. Amy did mention that you were a writer. I can tell you exactly what she said. She said, you know, uh, Bill's a writer, a uh, sort of, right? <laughs> well, as a matter of fact... Amy always felt it necessary to apologize for me. That was one thing about our marriage that was always so charming. Well, look, I didn't come here to discuss your marriage, York. I don't know what you're so bitter about. It's none of my business, but... Well, darling, what do I have to be bitter about? Here I am, an artist, living an unfettered life of freedom in Greenwich Village. What more could I ask? I guess I haven't read any of your books. Don't worry about it. You're in good company. You and the publishers. Oh, that's too bad. Must make a little problem in the grocery department. Oh, that doesn't worry me. You see, one can always manage to live comfortably in huck. Oh? And if one is willing to huck his soul, of course, the returns are much greater. I don't get you. That's not surprising, because nobody else but me would call it my soul. It's just the manuscript for an unpublished novel. Three years of work and sweat and pain. But my clever pawnbroker, Mr. Pomeroy, has a fair idea what it means to me. Mike Pomeroy, Amy's agent? Charming chap. Quite shrewd. In other words, if you could raise some money, you could get this brainchild of yours out of hock from him. Tell me, how long's it been since you've seen Amy? Several months. Why? You haven't been uptown near her apartment the last few days, huh? No. You sure? Of course. Anything else? No. Not for now. We will continue with the Bradshaw matter in a moment. Friends, how'd you like to thrill your favorite youngster with some of the most exciting toys of the year? Picture the breathless excitement of any child surrounded by six gaily colored balloon-like giant animals up to three feet long, and all for the low, low price of just one dollar. Now, first you get Bounce-O the Clown with round pot belly and funny nose. Next comes Hoppy the Australian Kangaroo. Third, there's Roscoe the Roller Skating Bear. He's two feet tall and looks almost like real. Fourth, there's Whitey the Fat Indoor Snowman. And fifth, Mortimer the Giant Mouse, 18 inches long and sure to scare the whistle. 
whiskers off any cat. That's five different giant animals. But now, hold your breath for the most sensational toy of all, the star of the whole Christmas season, the jolly giant talking Santa Claus, guaranteed to make everybody's Christmas a merrier one. He's a big roly-poly happy Santa. He stands erect on two legs, is actually over three feet tall and 32 inches around. Best of all, he actually talks. Just pull the tape and he says, Merry Christmas for all to hear. He's the biggest, merriest talking as Santa ever. Sure to please your youngsters and spread good cheer. Yes, giant Santa proves there really is a Santa Claus. That's a total of six giant animals made of brightly colored preformed sturdy latex which the kids can easily inflate. And the cost? Just one dollar, not for each. Just one dollar for all six of these lovable giants who'll turn your home into a circus parade. And here's a surprise. Mail your order today and you'll also receive absolutely free Peter the Rabbit, actually over two feet tall with big red ears almost nine inches long. But you must send now. Rush one dollar plus ten cents for packing and mailing for each set you want to Giant Animals, Box 1870, Grand Central Station, New York City. If not delighted with every one of your seven giant animals, return them to the Super Animals Company for a full refund. But keep the giant talking Santa as our gift. Order now, supplies are limited. Rush one dollar and ten cents for packing and mailing for each set in cash, check, or money order to Giant Animals, Box 1870, Grand Central Station, New York City. That's one dollar plus ten cents with your name and address. Mail to Giant Animals, Box 1870. That's Box 1870, Grand Central Station, New York City. Giant Animals, Box 1870, Grand Central Station, New York City. I was getting nowhere in my attempt to find out who was gunning for Amy Brad, Sean. I knew it. I called Mike Pomeroy, her agent, but he was out, so I took the next name on my list, the producer of Amy's play, Emery Taylor. Expense account item 9, 175. Cab fare to Taylor's apartment in the mid-50s near the Museum of Modern Art. Taylor wasn't in, but his wife Dora was. She was sleek-looking and a little on the brittle side. She was sitting behind a small bar in the den, and she looked quite at home there. Drink? Thanks. Will your husband be back soon, Mrs. Taylor? Who knows? Yeah. Oh, thank you. What do you want to see him about? Amy Bradshaw. What about Amy Bradshaw? I wanted to ask him if he knew of anyone who might want to harm Amy for any reason. Oh, I could answer that better than Emery. There is someone? There certainly is. Who? Me. Why? Would you like it if your husband was knocking himself out for your, what, for a younger woman? Well, now, isn't that part of the business? Is it? That's not all. Amy's hurt plenty of people getting where she is. You think your husband's one of them? I hope not. Who has she hurt, Mrs. Taylor? Do you know Dave Coleman? Her director? He was very much in love with Amy a few months ago. Oh, I see. I don't like to see someone I like get the way he was. One night here, he had a couple too many. He said, uh, if he couldn't have her... uh, Oh. Funny how quick he got over it, though. Never says anything about it anymore, huh? Not a word. What about Porter Kane? Oh, you've met him. Is he one of them that Amy's hurt? No, no, he's not in that category. Whatever happened to hurt him must have happened at about the age of five. What do you mean? Oh, isn't that when most of our troubles start? (laughs) I wouldn't know. I once paid a psychiatrist $500 to tell me that's when mine started. Your troubles? Sure. Can't you tell, Mr. Dollard? I'm the mixed-up type. Aren't we all, Mrs. Taylor? I left her, still sitting behind the bar, and somehow I felt sorry for her. But she had given a new lead. David Coleman, Amy's director, who'd had it bad for Amy just a few months ago and had now completely recovered. Maybe. Maybe. I made a mental note to have a little chat with Coleman that night. Then I put in another call to Mike Pomeroy. This time he was in, and I finally talked him into meeting me at a little bar on West 44th near the theater. But when I got there, I could see that he wasn't feeling very cooperative. Look, Dollar, I suggested once before, nice and polite, that maybe you should try minding your own business. I got the message all right, Pomeroy, and now I've got one for you. I am minding my own business. Hmm? This is what I was hired to do. The insurance company I represent holds a pretty hefty life insurance policy on Amy. And if she's in any danger, they want to know about it. But I told you before, I think this whole thing's pretty silly. I had a talk with Bill York, the writer, this morning. 
Even though he and Amy are separated, you know, he's still the beneficiary on our policy. So? So he says he's in hock to you. He's a bum. He wasn't doing Amy any good. She was worrying about him. When they split up, I told him as long as he stayed away from her, didn't try to see her, I'd keep him in groceries. I see. But naturally, I wanted some security. The manuscript of his book, for instance? Oh, great unborn American novel. Well, apparently that manuscript means a lot to That's him. That's why I figured it'd be good security. What's the matter, Dollar? You look like you uh, smelled something bad. Do I? What am I supposed to be? A philanthropist? Let me make one thing clear, Pomeroy. As far as the kind of loans you make, I agree with you. It's none of my business. But maybe I just got a sensitive nose. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, now I want my dough back. Is there anything wrong with that? Not a thing. I've got a play lined up I know will go over big. I want to produce it. York's tab has run up to several thousand bucks now. I could use the money. I see. The stupid part of the whole deal is that York could pay me back within a couple of months if he wanted to. Oh. Sure. There's a lot of dough floating around to be made in television these days. But that prima donna thinks he's way above that sort of thing. This play you want to produce, Pomeroy, will it star Amy? No. Sheila Mitchell. Oh. Well, thanks for the information. Be seeing you. I doubt it. On my way over to the Criterion Theater, I thought about Pomeroy. A rugged customer. And I felt he was one more who wouldn't let anyone stand in the way of anything he wanted to do. After the show, I picked up Amy backstage and took her back to her apartment. She looked very tired and didn't say much. We said goodnight at the front entrance, and I started walking along the sidewalk. Then I spotted somebody in the shadows across the street again, watching. I could tell from his hat and coat he was the same one who'd been there the night before last. I kept on walking until I reached the corner, then circled halfway around the block to an alley and edged up on him from behind. He didn't see me until I dove at him. <laughs> well, Bill York. Oh. What are you doing here? So you haven't been near Amy for a long time, huh? Except tonight and the night before last, watching her apartment. <sighs> Darling, Come on, York, start talking. And it better be good. Johnny Dollar will be back in a moment to tell you about tomorrow's episode. Friends, send for your set of some of the most exciting toys of the year. Six giant inflatable toys for only one dollar. Some up to three feet tall. You get Bounce-O the Happy Clown, Hoppy the Australian Kangaroo, Roscoe the two feet long roller skating bear, Whitey the fat indoor snowman, Mortimer the giant mouse 18 inches long, and last but not least, the great giant talking Santa. A roly-poly giant over three feet tall and 32 inches around the belly that actually says Merry Christmas out loud when you pull the tape. That six sensational giant toys for only one dollar, made of sturdy, gaily colored latex that the kids can easily inflate. Send one dollar for each set to Giant Animals, Box 1870, Grand Central Station, New York City. And if you order right now, you get Peter the Rabbit over two feet tall, absolutely free. If not delighted with your giant animals, your money refunded immediately. Order today. You may never hear this offer again. Rush one dollar plus ten cents for packing and mailing in cash, check, or money order to Giant Animals, Box 1870, Grand Central Station, New York City. That's one dollar plus ten cents for each set with your name and address to Giant Animals, Box 1870, Grand Central Station, New York City. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's episode of The Amy Bradshaw Matter. Tomorrow, I find I have even more of a reason for keeping Amy alive than I'd realized. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Robert Reif, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking. Mm -hmm.